the mass of a regulation tennis ball is 35 grams although it can vary slightly and tests have shown that the ball is in contact with the tennis racket for 30 milliseconds that's 30 to the 10 to the negative 3 seconds this number can vary depending on the racket and the swing we shall assume a 30 millisecond contact time for this exercise the fastest known served tennis ball was served by big bill till then in 1931 and its speed was measured to be 73.14 meters per second the first problem or the first question is what is the impulse and the net force that big bill exerted on his tennis ball in this record serve and you have a clue that the answer should be approximately close to 140 newtons second problem if big bill's opponent returned his serve with 55 meters per second it means to say that after the ball traveled with 73.14 second as served by big bill um it's being returned to him by f at 55 meters per second now what force and impulse did he exert on the ball assuming only horizontal motion so i already pre-illustrated the problem with some of the given as you can see the mass m here stands for the mass of the ball it's 57 grams so i just wrote it as 57 times 10 to the negative 3 grams so that i will be working with si units the time is uh, given to be the, this is the contact time between the uh, the ball here over here and the racket and that is 30 milliseconds or 30 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds now the v here this should be appropriately named as vi because that's the initial velocity oh, no no sorry it should be vf because that is the final velocity with which the ball is moving after being in contact with the racket for that uh, 30 millisecond so basically what is happening here is that um, of course if you are familiar with the game uh, we have this ball has to be served that means to say that if it's ha it has to be served that um, tennis ball is initially moving at a velocity of zero meters per second because that's stationary and it hits it needs to be hit by the um what's this the i don't know what this is it's most like probably a racket so it must be hit by a racket and after that one according to the problem that eventually led to the racket moving at the velocity um as indicated to be uh final velocity of 73.14 meters per second okay so now that we have a grasp of the illustration of the problem we are now ready to solve the problem so what we are looking for is these two quantities the first one is impulse and force so once you know the other one you could directly get the other one i'm, I'm talking about the impulse and the force quantities okay now the thing that we have to remember from this problem is simply the impulse momentum theorem now if you remember impulse is just represented as j with an arrowhead indicating that it's a vector and that is just equal to the f the net force multiplied by the delta t and that could also be equal to just the change in the momentum now for the first problem by the way this is just the impulse momentum theorem that we discuss i'm just gonna write this down impulse momentum theorem all right now that we have this equation what we are going to do first is to solve simply for the impulse by taking the fact that impulse is just a change in the object's momentum all right so from there um, if you're just gonna break that down um, change in momentum would just mean that the final momentum minus the initial momentum all right momentum being mv this will be replaced by mass of that um serving ball um the multiplied by the final momentum i mean final velocity minus mass of the ball and then mine uh, multiplied by the initial velocity now as you can see in the illustration the initial velocity is zero because the ball is stationary before being hit for 30 milliseconds by the racket so that means to say that this term over here is just zero so this is telling you that simply the impulse j is just mass multiplied by the final velocity and this is so great because it's easy 
Alright, so we are just going to substitute the value. So, 57 grams is just 57 times 10 to the 3 kilograms multiplied by the final velocity of 73.14 uh, meters per second. So, that is approximately equal to... Um, sorry, I should have wrote it like this. That's approximately equal to 4.16... 898 898 the units is in kilogram times meter per second so this is the quantity of impulse now to find for force uh, you just have to use the equation that I already written above for so finding the force um, it's just again the impulse momentum impulse is equal to F uh, sum of F or just F net Delta T and that is equal to the change in my object's momentum. All right. So from there, it's very clear that um, we can uh, get what's this uh, force out of it. So you're just going to use this. J is simply equal to F net multiplied by the time of contact. So since I'm looking for F net, I could just simply divide both sides by delta T. And upon doing that one... Uh, of course, so that he would cancel out on the right hand side. So the net force then that is applied by Bill will just be the impulse J divided by delta T. All right. So substituting the the values, the impulse J is um, simply a four point one six eight nine eight, and that is kilogram times meter per second, and then you divide it by thirty times 10 to the negative 3 seconds so that would give you a unit of kilogram meter per second squared and that is very familiar because that is just Newton and the number if you do the calculation is 138.966 so let's just approximate it to approximately equal to 139 Newtons so this is the force that is being experienced by the ball upon being hit by Bill. It's approximately 100, uh, 139 newtons and that causes the ball to move at some 73.14 meters per second. Alright, so that's for the first problem. I mean for the first part of the problem. Now on the second part of the problem, uh, if Big Bill's opponent returned his serve with a speed of 55 meters per second, what force and what impulse did the opponent exert on the ball, assuming only horizontal motion? Now, of course, uh, we just have to analyze first the problem. What is happening here is, since the ball is already served, so it's initially moving now with a velocity of, you guess what? The initial velocity is just... How fast the ball moves after being hit by 139 newtons by Bill. So I've mentioned earlier that it's now moving at 73.14 newtons as the initial velocity. Now of course, uh, since the serve is being returned, that means to say that um, there must be a force applied by the opponent for it to return to the opposite side and we assume only horizontal motion. And that velocity now is what is being mentioned by the problem in part B to be 55 meters per second, the one over here. But then again, um, since this is moving to the left and velocity is a vector quantity, you have to take special attention on the negative sign. Okay, so I'm hoping that's all clear. And once you do read the problem again you do realize at some point that we are just looking for the same quantity that we are we looked for before namely the impulse and um, the force so this is telling us clearly that we are just going to utilize the same set of equation now since i'm feeling lazy and i'm hoping you do get the point anyway we are just going to use this equation that we used earlier the impulse momentum theorem and i'm just going to copy that one and paste it over here and do um, some manipulation according to our problem all right but it's very clear again that um, from the impulse momentum theorem i'm going to look for the impulse and that is just delta p with an arrowhead or the change in momentum 
But this time around, uh, if you notice, I actually uh, removed this um, zero. It's because of the fact that, as I've said from the problem over here, your initial velocities and final velocities both have uh, non-zero values. So we're not going to, um, you know, like use zero in, in this problem. So that means to say that this MVI, which we turned zero um, previously, will just be expressed as M. VI. All right. So, yep. And I'm going to erase this one because that is not how it will look like in this problem. So, uh, I'm just going to substitute the values. If you remember, um, the mass is 57 grams or that is 57 times 10 to the negative 3 kilograms. The final velocity after being returned by the opponent of Bill, it moved at negative 55 meters per second. So, I'm going to write it here. 55 meters per second so it really varies it will really vary a lot if you did not take into account the negative that's why it's you know, in dealing with velocities as a vector quantity and you know that it's a vector you really have to take note of the sign all right so the mass is still the same 57 times 13, 10 to the 3 kilograms uh, you multiply it by vi and the vi is the initial serve uh, which is which allows the ball to move at 73.14 uh, meters per second. I actually notice I put Newton over here, but let me do that correction. That should just be meters per second. All right. So when you do that calculation, that will give you uh, a value of this is a matter of plugging in the values your calculator. Uh, that will give you a value of negative seven. Point three zero three nine eight kilograms times meter per second. So this is the impulse uh, that is due to uh, the bit, bit to Bill's opponent. Now, of course, we need to find for force F, and uh, yeah, we are done with the impulse. We're now looking for the force. If you look at over here in part A, we could actually use the same set of equations. So I'm just going to copy this one to make life simpler but of course if you're taking the test you cannot do that because you have to manually do that copying thing so we are just going to use that same set of equation because basically the same problem we just have to deal with different situation so impulse j i'll just replace it by negative 7.30398 uh, uh, kilograms meter per second divided by delta t uh, we assume the same contact time with the ball and the rocket to be 30 milliseconds or 30 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds all right so clearly the units would become kilogram meter per second squared which is very precious to our eyes because that is just newtons so the numerical value would then be negative 2 Four three point uh, four six six, or simply that is approximately. Let's just approximate that negative two four three newtons. All right. So this is the F net. I'm just going to put it in a box now. Another another thing that I would like to tell you here is that uh, okay, it's not working. Let me just have this fixed. Okay. The unit of the sign here matters a lot. This is telling us that the net force is moving towards the left or is applied. So since this is the force is applied towards the left. As you can imagine, if Bill is coming from here, and of course his opponent must be on this side. So to um, counter that ball, the force must be applied on the negative side towards the left meaning opposing opposing bill so that is why it should be the case that you should get a negative sign of the force over here because if that is positive it's not making any sense all right so that's it for the solution